Okay, let's talk a little bit about impulse momentum. Uh, impulse momentum is really cool because it's a way of helping us explain before and after pictures of objects, bodies that collide. Uh, very first thing is when we're doing um, collision problems, or problems that have to do with impulse momentum, we have to define the system. That's why I put a box around these two objects here. Let's say this is object A, object B. We have to tell the person working the problem that our system is both closed and isolated. Okay, closed and isolated. Closed means that if I have a two kilogram object and a two kilogram object, so two, two kilogram, I add these up, the total mass is four kilograms. I'm not going to gain or lose any mass. It has to be four kilograms before and after, no matter what. So I'm not going to hit and then end up with six kilograms of material or only one kilogram of material. If I were in a car crash, yeah, some parts of the car might break off, but I would still have a total of you know, the same mass as what I started with. Isolated means that the only forces that I'm caring about are inside the system. I'm not going to worry about all the different force vectors that are going on all over the place. I've got force vectors everywhere. But if they're outside the system, they cannot change the conditions. If they're external forces, they're not going to change and interact with the internal conditions here. Okay, so that's really, really important. If it's outside, it doesn't change the conditions inside. All right, so let me move these outside of, out of the way real quick. All right, so right now we're doing something called a recoil problem. Okay, a recoil problem. Okay, a recoil situation. Now, I know that the law of conservation of momentum, here's momentum right here. The equation for momentum is P momentum equals mass times velocity. We already know that pretty well. Okay. Okay. That means if I have a mass and I'm moving in any way or I'm not moving at all, I have a level of momentum that I can that I can uh, that I can calculate. Now one of the most important things is this idea of conservation of P. P meaning it's momentum. P means momentum. Conservation of momentum means that whatever momentum I have before an interac interaction I have to have at the end of an interaction down here. Okay, this is A and B as well. A, B. Okay, so let's calculate that real quick. This right here has a momentum A and momentum B. Momentum A and momentum B. Whatever this adds up to has to be the same as my after shot. Okay, so this is my before collision. This is after. Okay, so this expands P is equal to MB, so my mass times velocity, plus my mass times velocity. Okay, watch this. My mass is 2. My mass is 2. Now, since they're not moving, this is a, this is a station, stationary two bodies, my not moving is 0. 0. 2 times 0 is 0, plus another 0, and what do we get? We get a momentum initial of A and B of zero. Okay, and the unit is kilogram meters per second. But since there's not really a formal unit for this, I usually just use a big B. Yeah, that means bumps, because that's what momentum kind of is. Momentum is the ability to bump something out of the way. So you can say this is zero bumps, or you can say zero kilogram meters per second. This is my old Jedi Master teacher's unit right here that he came up with. Okay, so now let's evaluate down here what happens after the situation is over. So do I have a P? or in a, a momentum final for A and a momentum final for B? I do, right? Because they're going to have mass, they're going to have velocity. So let's say I didn't lose any mass because this is a closed system. And let's say B went in the positive direction at 2 meters per second. I went a speed of 2 meters per second in the left direction. But I know with vectors that if this is my positive direction, this has to be negative. So watch what's going to happen here. Mass times velocity. Mass times velocity. And I know that when I add them up, conservation of momentum says I should get zero. But that doesn't make sense. I got zero over here only because they weren't moving. So how am I going to get zero if these guys are moving? Easy. Watch this. My mass is still two. My velocity is negative two, right? Negative two meters per second. And over here, my mass is 2, my velocity is positive 2. So watch what happens. 2 times negative 2, negative 4 bumps, plus 2 times 2, 4 bumps. 
what do we get? 4 plus negative 4 is 0 bumps, or 0 kilogram meters per second. So look, even though I was moving, when I add up the directions, when I add up the vectors of my momentum, momentum is a vector quantity, I get 0 before and 0 in my after effect. Okay? So the initial momentum of both my objects were 0 because they weren't moving. Initial momentum A is 0, initial momentum B is 0. The total momentum was 0. Down here, my final momentum for A was negative. My final momentum for B was positive, only because of the direction they were going. But when they add up, they tend to be zero. Whether we're doing a recoil question or we're doing, or we're doing a, 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 a elastic, an inelastic collision where they stick together, um, you're going to find that you should always get the same momentum before and after. We're always going to have a before equals after sort of reaction. Okay, so this is the basis for all of our math for this chapter. Okay, this is the conservation of momentum. This has implications on airbags, right? On airbags. This has implications on cannons, on seat belts. And we're going to learn about these things as we go further in the year.